68, 68 actually, in the spring of 68. Um, Patty went to her class. By that time, I had moved over to do community development work totally, and we were working with the Ethiopian teams in this, I don't know, about 20 mile radius around the uh, around the community of Metu. And so I was not there that day. She went to class that day. Uh, there were about 60 students in the class. She, as you walk into your class, a teacher can sense something. She knew that something had really happened. She didn't know what. And uh, one of the leaders in the class, uh, whose name was Beth Akadu, uh, stood up and she said, Beth Akadu, what's, what's going on? What's happening? What, what is it? Because there was just something really, really wrong, really amiss among those students. And she said, uh, and, and Beth Akadu said, why did you kill him? Why did you kill the father of all black men? It was the day that Martin Luther King had been shot. The Ethiopians knew what was going on in the world. They would listen uh, to BBC or to the uh, a Russian uh, shortwave radio. And they had heard in the morning as they before they came to school that uh, Martin Luther King had been shot. Uh, she was then left to explain as best she could America, for which there was no explanation, no satisfactory explanation. A month and a half later, in the morning, the same this time it was Robert Kennedy. How do you explain these things here in this country, let alone in Ethiopia? So that's what we were left to do to explain America. Uh, how do you explain the Vietnam War? Or today, how do you explain the war in Afghanistan? That's what Peace Corps volunteers are doing today all around the world. Why is it that we are continuing to surge in Afghanistan? Well, we were doing that in the 1960s, explaining to the Ethiopian village, uh, who were actually far more sophisticated than we were, why Robert why uh, Robert Kennedy was shot, and why Martin Luther King. Try to explain that. Um, but that's what we were doing, explaining America. When we left uh, shortly after this, or when it was time for us to leave shortly after this, there was uh, what was a community uprising trying to persuade us not to return to the most dangerous place in the world, America. Try to explain that. Why would you go back, stay here where it is safe? Why would you go back to America? Uh, the challenges for the Peace Corps volunteers around the world today are, are no different. Try to explain why this country, why you are a Peace Corps volunteer out there with the word peace in what is the most militarized country in the world. Not so easily done. The question came, how do we continue to serve? The Vietnam War was still going on, and Patty and I decided that the public policy, politics, were where we could have the greatest impact. Uh, not only on, on that issue of the war, but on the issue of America and all that was happening here in the United States, the issue of um, civil rights, economic development, poverty, and so forth. And so we chose a path of politics, and that's been the path that I've been on. I call it public service, public policy, and politics, one and the same. Uh, so I've been on that path, and Patty has been there with me, and actually leading in much of what we've done, but also in the community and service programs in the community. Food, 
uh, economic development, uh, children, education, and the rest. Pretty much the same thing that Peace Corps volunteers do when they return. They stay engaged, uh, and, and we have, in my role, many different ways, into the assembly, 1974, at the age of 26. How do you win? Well, you just knock on every door and say, here's who I am, here's what I want to do, and Sixteen thousand dollars later, I was in the assembly, and a lot of, a lot of walking, a lot of talking, a lot of community organizing, which you learn in the Peace Corps. You organize, you get people to, to do things that they hadn't thought they wanted to do, and so we won that election.